Hi, my name is Kieran Milne. I'm a tech lead with the Juniper Networks certification program in education services here at Juniper Networks. This learning bite is going to focus on OSPF version 2 neighbor and adjacency timers for Junos devices. So any discussion around OSPF timers uh, really centers around an OSPF hello packet. So this is a, an OSPF type 1 packet and hello messages are sent out from a Junos device or from any device using the multicast address 224.0.0.5. Now hello packets and hello messages in general provide a number of really important key uh, functional elements for an OSPF network. The first is that they enable neighbor discovery. So a device announces itself essentially out to the network every so often using a hello message. And that's how other devices in the network, neighboring devices, discover that router or that device. Um, and so, you know, following that logic, um, those hello messages also help maintain awareness throughout the neighbor or throughout the network among neighbors. Uh, so, you know, if uh, uh, a given router has a neighbor that is sending hellos towards it, well, as long as it keeps receiving hellos, it, it maintains awareness that that, um, that router and that device is still on the network and things are going normally. Now, to follow that a step further, uh, OSPF hellos also provide a mechanism for failure detection. So using that same scenario, if a router is receiving hellos from its neighbor every so often, and then all of a sudden those hellos stop coming, well, after a certain amount of time, you know, a device can decide that something's wrong here. Something has happened with that neighbor. It, it is down or it is rebooted or something has happened and it's gone away. And so, you know, the network can take action on that basis. So with that information about hello packets, we can move on to the timers. So one key element that's inside a hello packet is uh, a couple of parameters related to timers, in particular the hello interval and the dead interval. So as you can see here, some default setting information. Hello intervals, well, as you would expect, they represent the amount of time or the frequency that a given device sends a hello message out of its OSPF enabled interfaces. So by default, it's 10 seconds on broadcast and point to point networks. By default, 30 seconds on non broadcast multi access networks. And there we go. There's our hello mechanism right there. Now, the key related timer interval is the dead interval. So it mentions here four times the hello interval. Uh, and as we were talking about, right, uh, after a certain amount of time, if a given device doesn't hear from its neighbor, it decides that that neighbor is down, something has happened to it. And in more particular terms, four times the hello interval is how long that device waits before declaring its neighbor dead or down. One note that's important is that these parameters must match between neighboring devices. And if they don't, in fact, they won't even establish a neighborship. So a really key uh, requirement there that they match. Now you can get a lot more information about neighborships and adjacency formations and timers for these uh, by looking at the OSPF V2 RFC uh, 2328, and you can see the link for it there. So let's go ahead and take a look at how this all works uh, on real equipment. So our, our demo lab setup here is very simple as you can see. We'll have R1 and R2 in a single OSPF Area 0, and that's really all there is to it. So let's take a look. All right, so we're into our lab environment here, and let's just take a, a look at a couple of things. First of all, we're here on R1, and let's do a neighborship check. You can see we have a, a full state neighborship with our neighbor, in this case, it's R2. Let's also look at our configuration. There we go. You can see a very simple uh, configuration, area zero with one interface, the one pointing over to R2, and uh, a trace options file as well happens to be there. So one thing to notice right away is there's no information in this configuration about the timers. And the reason for this is because uh, we mentioned earlier the timers have their own default settings, and unless we wanted to manipulate those, those to customize settings, uh, we're not going to see anything in the configuration. So we're going to need to look somewhere else to find the information for the current uh, active timer settings. So the first thing we can try is the trace options file here. And you can see lots of information about hello packets, uh, 
both transmitting towards R2 and being received from our neighbor R2, but there's nothing here with enough detail the way it's configured right now to see the, the timer information. So we're going to have to try something else. So I'm going to enter a, a command here that lets us monitor the interface that we, we want to watch in real time, to watch the packets going in and out of it in real time. So let me just type that out here. There we go. This is the command we want, and so let's get that going and see what happens. And that's it. That's all we need for the moment. So you can see two packets gone by here. The first one is outbound. And the key thing to note is there are our timer settings. This is a hello packet going towards our neighbor. There's the hello timer. And there's the dead timer. There are our default settings, 10 seconds and 40 seconds, so we know things are at their default state. And likewise, there's an inbound IP packet from our neighbor. Uh, and you can see, look over here, our neighbor has this IP address, and they are sending it towards that uh, the hello multicast uh, address we were using or, or talking about earlier. And so we know that's our inbound hello bit. And you can see, again, hello timer is at default. And you can see once again, hello timer is at its default, and so is the dead timer. So things are looking good. We now know where to find this information, and we can confirm um, both sides have the same timers, and, and things are looking good. So this all supports that, that full state that we were talking about. So now let's watch what happens uh, if we want to start changing this, and maybe turn, turning one side off and see how the timers actually do their work of, of neighborship awareness and failure detection, that kind of thing. So let's show our neighborships again. And the parameter we're going to focus on this time is over here, that field called dead. Notice that it says about 36 there. And as I start showing it again, you're going to see it seems to loop around. And that's true. That's exactly what it's doing. It's looping around. So what's happening here is the dead value starts at 40, and it starts to count down. And approximately 10 seconds into its countdown, it resets. It receives its hello from its neighbor, and it resets back up to 40. And you can see that kind of around and around, and that's the mechanism that tells us, um, you know, the hello messages are being received, the, the dead interval is in, in good shape, and so it just carries on that way. So now we're going to watch what happens if we down this R1 neighbor and see what happens to the timers uh, as a result. So I'm simply going to deactivate OSPF, and that'll... Uh, take care of things pretty, pretty easily here. So we're going to look at what happens to R1, and you can see immediately we have nothing because we're not even running OSPF. And I'm going to go over to R2 as well, and what you can see is that dead interval has already been counting down. It's counted past the 30s, now it's down into the 20s, so we haven't received uh, two hellos at this point. As we get down into the teens, we're going to pass... 10 seconds, so we haven't received three uh, hellos. And as you remember, how many intervals uh, do we wait before we declare this neighbor down or dead? Well, four intervals are 40 seconds, and sure enough, after 40 seconds, this device removes that neighbor from its database and its table. Uh, it declares it down, something is wrong, uh, that neighbor is dead to us. And so that's a view of timers uh, with our OS OSPF devices here. So that takes us to the end of this learning bite. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching, and we will catch you next time. Bye for now. Visit the Juniper Education Services website to learn more about courses. View our full range of classroom, online, and e-learning courses. Learning paths, industry segment and technology-specific training paths. Juniper Networks Certification Program the ultimate demonstration of your competence. And the training community, from forums to social media, join the discussion.